that's a tremendous looking trophy. Building up on PlayStation Podcast in 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 the Oceanians. My name's Don Blunt. Join me as always. Ashley hey, Hobley. Hey Dylan, excited to be here and excited to get into it. You're good. Thanks. That's a bouncing off that. I don't know why I did that, but there you go. Uh in the trophy cabinet this week, gold trophy for trends and a platinum, Gran Turismo. It's good. But let's talk about trends first. So trends and dreams and trains. Trains of trims. Sorry, trains of the... Sorry. Oh, I get it. It's a matching trains. up of trains and dreams. <laughs> Got him. Uh, so, of course, we talked about last week how trends was about to release the latest uh, Media Molecule original uh, that's uh, made and you can play inside of dreams. Uh, play a little, a little bit of that and uh, it's very good. And it's disappointing more people probably won't play it, even if they are people who probably would like the game. So, Trends is, well, that's like two types of, tr- like, it. the first, like, it has a bunch of tutorial levels that start when you play. Uh, control-wise, it's literally sort of your train on a track, press R2 to go forward, press L2 to go backwards. Um, you can, as you're coming up to, like, a, I don't know what you call them, like the switches on the ground that change the direction of train heads, you press the left or right analog stick in that direction to change the direction it goes. Uh, if you get onto a piece of track that's, like, uh, um, uh, able to be moved, like, l- lowered up or down, uh, when you're on that track, you can press, uh, move the analog stick left, uh, sorry, up or down to move that up or down. Like, it's all very, like, straightforward. However, once you, like, sort of get the hang of it, the game throws two types at least from what I played, two types of courses at you, basically. So you've got one where it's try and beat the track as fast as possible. And the way that you can get the goal time score is usually going to require you to, as you go off any um, jumps throughout the course, you have to boost off them and try and land like a flip or two in the air. And that means that when you get to the end of the track, it will subtract, I think, like two or three seconds off your total time. Uh, per flip you got and that's sort of what like some of the, the times is only like nine seconds and stuff like that so you got the fast ones um and the trick for those is simply sometimes you just got to learn the track so it's like go forward flick this uh swick the train track to the left go go forward a little bit hit a button that'll open up a gate reverse the train backwards go for like you just sort of have to learn it and then just intro uh, do it really really quickly the other type of tracks are simply finish it and the finish it ones are sort of more puzzle based train elements. Like one of the most confusing ones I've done so far was it like you start with no you start with just the train, like the the front part. You've got no whatever you call the the things that hold cargo, like the little little things go on the back or front of the train, whatever. Okay. Um and you as you progress through the this level, you're going forward, you press a button and it locks a gate, reverse back, go grab one of those, then go reverse up, go forward, take that to another area. Um, it's got a little gate blocking it, but then as you go up to the gate, you hit it with your train, press circle, it releases the, the thing, so then it slides under the gate, presses a button so they can progress further in the level and basically you as the level progresses you get more and more of those things that hold cargo and you got to use them to unlock more buttons but then there's also parts where you've got to get the train to face a particular direction so you can do these things correctly which means you have to go like figure out how to uncouple the those parts of the train and then like swing around the track from a different direction and then so you can reverse back up to it so then when you go forward to this like it sounds very complicated and it, it was to a like degree but that's i think there's the the levels i sort of started getting to the those ones were starting to get a lo- lot more complicated like yeah and just definitely feel like puzzles you've got to uh figure out as you're playing them which is really cool but also frustrating because i'm like motherfucker i just have like, just don't. patience um they're really cool. Uh, I like. I mean, the game is just, it's a game. Like, I don't know what else, like, I, I say this a million times. Like, it's crazy that it's, it'll be like, hey, the, the levels in tr- Dreams. It's like, it doesn't even, you know, you, you boot up, you boot up trends in, in Dreams, but it just feels like you're just playing this whole Media Molecule original game. Um, if you open up the pause menu and look at the credits for trends, it's got like fucking 50 people that worked on it. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> it's of just this game inside of dreams. It's, it's, it's insane. So, um, you know, it's got all this original music, the way that the, all the elements have been built, the way that if you overshoot boost too far, the train 
uh, and like say it like flies off the track or something like that and the way it like just sort of falls apart because they're they're toy toy trains um the way that the physics even just works of the like, like let's say you're going around uh you're going around a bend with a bunch of the 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 carrier things attached to the back of the train and you boost um and it just means that you, your train will like start to go sideways the wheels like lift up and then everything goes unbalanced and next second you're flying off the course and you you have to restart the level like all the the physics stuff and the way it, all that sort of works it's it's insane to think that all again all of this is just i mean it's made by people who obviously know how to make games and are very creative but it's insane to think all of this is made with their own tools inside dream so um no very very good i i I don't think it's particularly a game I'm probably going to finish only because I, I, as much as I think it's great, it's not really something that's, I would say, normally my particular cup of tea, especially the the more puzzle-based levels where I'm like, for fuck's sake, like, this is just annoying me now, <laughs> um, that sort of stuff. But um, I'm seeing a bunch of people, like I look through the couple of people I follow who I know have been playing it. They're loving it, looking through the the response from people on online a lot of people have been loving it. i've seen a few people like if you, i can scroll through social media and find people saying that trends is their favorite game of the year so far which i don't think is hyperbole i just think that like this is for for people who like these types of games which is i guess like a puzzle i don't know what yeah. this i don't know it reminds me of, like a bygone era like a ps1 type game to be honest but like obviously graphically better but that's like sort of gameplay wise what it reminds me of um but yeah it's very very cool so um yeah, I know. You, do you want to check it out still? Or I do want not? to check it out. I just haven't had time to install Dreams. <laughs> yeah. I, I found out I hadn't actually deleted it. I just needed to download a two gig update file because Ooh. I knew that Dreams needed to, to be there forever. Um, but continuing, because once I played a bit of Trends and then I rage quit on a level because I played it for like five minutes and then I'd gone through all of this stuff and then I accidentally went too fast around the corner and my fucking train fell off the side and then had to restart the level. I'm like, fuck this. <laughs> I was like, I'm, I'm done now. Um, I went through and I just randomly went and had a look around Dreams because I was already in the game. Man, there's some good games in Dreams. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I was, I played a few. I was like, yeah, shit, shit's insane. There's a, I can't remember what it's called. There's, there's a game I played probably like half an hour of last night, I think. And it's literally, I think it was called like Hookshot Man or something. Um, it was like on the front page, like featured or whatever. A lot of people played it. I'm sure anyone who's like Dreams massive fans, like Hookshot Man, that's, yeah, we all know about that. Um, it's a, uh, imagine Portal crossed with free running and a grapple hook is basically what this game is. And it's very, very good. Um, I played like 10, as I said, I think I played like six to 10 levels half an hour and there's still a bunch more but you just like wake up you're this dude i don't know in like a test facility thing so very portal la la um and then you can uh it, the first few levels introduce the tutorial part which is hey you know you can double jump you can uh, run on walls and you uh, then after you do the first few levels you unlock this grapple hook so then there's these certain things uh in Rube, like you can't just grapple on anything. There's only like certain things you can grapple to. Mm. Um, and then after that, after you got the hang of that bit, they're like, hey, now let's introduce some um, cubes, very portal like that you have to put on switches, or even at times it's like, oh man, how do I get through this level? It's like, okay, well, you put the port, you put the cube on the other thing and then you activate the switch so it like sends the portal, the cube flying up into the air, and then you can grapple hook up there. Like there's puzzles. So you've got an element of puzzles to solve to be able to move through the level. And then you've got the fact that after you've unlocked the way to progress through the, the room, then you have to do some sort of platforming um, by like free running, like running across the wall and then like grapple hooking your way through the room sort of thing. Um, but that was very good. I was like, I was like, this game is good shit. Um, and then what was the other thing I played? Oh, the other thing I really, really liked is someone made like a, I think it was only a couple minutes. And it's not really a game. It's more of a like a short film that you sort of have control over as it's happening. But it's like this dinosaur. I can't remember what it's called, but like this dinosaur just like shows up to this dude's house or whatever, like T-Rex attacking through fucking New York City or whatever. But I like the way they did it because it's all on rails and all you do is um, like the character, like it's a short film. So the character is just doing whatever they're doing. But you have control of like the camera 
that the like the the point of view they keep like we like they're, they're trying to film it on a camera or whatever and you it makes it go through the dual sensors like motion controls so you just like as you're moving the controller around it moves the camera and then you can press r2 l2 to like zoom the camera in and out and everything but otherwise it's just on rails um but it was very good and the sound design and the dinosaur roar and the everything like that it was it was quite tense so i, I really really enjoyed that as um as well so i don't know dreams is dreams is still alive and kicking and um I still fantastic, absolutely fantastic game in another world. I'm sure I'd love to just spend more time. I could easily just spend more time playing Dreams. If, if it sounds like such a weird thing to say, I have to play other games, but kind of do. But um, I'm hoping that even though they're going to like, they're done, Media Molecule is like moving on to the next project, that I just think that the, I guess the the Dreams hardcore player base and the people that love making games in there um i think that's i I don't think it's i don't think it'll die off uh, anytime soon i think people will still be making shit in there for years like especially the people who like think about the people who have their first few years people were just spending like getting used to and learning basically game development to a degree and learning this tool set and now the stuff that they're making is just so much better and you've also now got people all working together so even that hookshot game i was playing that was like you you listed like oh you know game design by these people do this you know like which we're starting to see more and more of it's like the pig detective team and you know all these sorts of yeah dreams developers and stuff the pig detective team making something outside of dreams now i know they're working on a new pig detective game (laughs) <laughs> which they i follow them on twitter and they they were posting updates on it recently and stuff like that and um the i think uh they were revealing the voice cast because I, I i think i saw that greg miller's like doing a voicing a character in it and um a few other like video game sort of people so i mean maybe i could i could miss the the thing no it yeah. still says made in dreams so there you go so yeah, they're just working on their they've just been working on the newest pig detective game, so um which you know, really looking forward to because Pig Detective, one of the best franchises in the in the dreams were. So um and I'm sure that's what I mean. Stuff like that, I just I I, I see it continuing. And because a lot of the people that are doing this, obviously they want to um the t- pig detective team or what the else this hookshot team the couple that made that or whatever i'm sure all these people would love to get into game development and maybe they're studying game development on the side maybe they are working on an indie game on the side and stuff like that but being able to like i I just like what is a better portfolio than having a a fucking well-made dreams game i don't like as far as a creative vision i don't know like yeah just it's really good so i don't know again dreams is great play trends play these other things i'm talking about do all the things Let's get into some PlayStation news for the week. Uh, firstly, coming from Push Square, contrary to reports, uh, contrary, contrary to reports suggesting otherwise, the PS5 has quietly been on the upswing in recent days, particularly in Sony's home region of Japan. For Mitsu's latest report, thanks to Jumatsu, uh, reports that PlayStation 5 family sold 53,211 units during the week of 24th of July. Um, with the PS4 apparently doing 784. Go off. Uh, for Mitsu reports that PS5 now has exceeded 4 million cumulative col- domestic sales, comprised of 3 million, 3.5 min- million disc compatible and the other 500,000 digital only consoles. Um, weirdly, Sony ha- hasn't, a, hasn't made a, a big deal out of this. I don't know why. Maybe they're waiting now or something. Because usually when they would pass like a, a milestone, like, oh, yeah, 4 million units japan like i feel like that would usually be something i'd post about but anyway consoles consoles at least have picked up and we've seen them in australia um it's good to it was good to read that at least outside of in other regions as well there's everyone's getting their hands on the consoles finally what do you think about that number too so three and a half million disc and then only like five hundred thousand digital do you reckon that's about right or? yeah <laughs> yeah physical media for the win am i right <laughs> yeah and you would like, think it would, would be higher in japan because they've got like good internet so yeah that's what i was thinking so i thought yeah. it would be a bit- is it just a collector mentality or like they're just frugal you know they know you can get games cheaper for 
I don't know because yeah. Japan has better bit internet, but they also like I feel like they also love physical stuff. You know, like yeah. physical media stuff. Like you think about all the, I mean, the you think of all the toys that they <laughs> everywhere. Yeah, t- you know, all toys, like, and then also just like just all like the stuff. stores that they sell like original PS One games, Nintendo games. You know, like there's yeah. so many of those that people go to over there. So I don't know. Maybe America is like I feel like America is just the the more that's just weird because when you also think of like capitalism and communism and hoarding stuff, you think Americans. So, mm. but yeah. yeah. Well, so I guess it's more of a. I'm but sure also places the, like GameStop and stuff. Yeah, like the- <laughs> the, that's the issue. It's like where they have to get the games from. I guess. Yeah. Whereas maybe in Japan they've got like a better. I don't actually know. I wonder what's more readily available. You know. Yeah. Like, I assume that is a big part of it. Yeah. Um. Again, you got to think this is a country that literally shuts down when the new Dragon Quest comes out. So. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> And they all carry around their physical uh, little uh, blue slimes and stuff from Drag yeah. Quest. So. <laughs> uh, three new games have been announced from PlayStation's China Hero Project. So there's not much for a lot of these, but I wanted to go over them all because they held a little event. And of course, I love talking about the little uh, China Hero Project games because most of them I've liked. Most of them. So first thing, they announced the God Slayer coming from Panthea games uh no trailer yet or maybe it is by now but not when i wrote this anyway the god slayer is an open world action rpg featuring a highly immersive gameplay system and story experiencing allowing players to enhance their abilities through battles and world exploration with the ultimate goal of defeating enemies and saving the world and if that isn't the most generic video game synopsis you've seen in a while i don't know what is because <laughs> that's like the player can do things and beat enemies and do the stuff and do the stuff uh then we got Dabba, Land of the War Scars. This one actually does have a trailer that you can watch. Uh, so it's Dabba, Land of, the, Land of Water. Uh, sorry, it's Water. I've read it wrong. Water Scar is a new tile from Darkstar. It tells the story of a humanoid clay puppet. When the world is on the verge of collapse, the puppet traces the whereabouts of the water fragments within the ancient city and throughout their journey of defeating enemies and seeking answers, unravels the story of the world and oneself. The game features various landscapes, including a band of ruins, a magnificent magnificent ancient city gloomy prison vast rift valley expansive snowfield deadly forest and floating city non-linear levels are internet connected distinct and intricate that's a lot of um fucking descri- descriptive words there uh, but watching trailer, so it's a it's a third person action game it looks like it has a lot of um i don't know you'd call it like Hmm. I'm not sure. Like it's very like uh, Souls influenced looking yep. stuff is what it looks like to me. But then you've got some characters and stuff that I assume must be based on. I don't know, like some Chinese folklore sort of or religious. I'm not sure what the actual thing. But there's a lot of like weird looking creatures. I haven't seen anything else here. And even the 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 female character looks like she's fucking like I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. A lot of, but it looks cool. Looks like a there's a monster at the end that comes out with a that looks completely fucked up. So. Um, they don't say, I mean, it definitely looks like a Souls like game, and I assume it is just based on how a lot of the battles in the trail are like one on one big boss battle sort of thing. So, um, but maybe it's not, maybe it is like that's what it is, but it's more Devil May Cry, and you can like it's not like as hard as the Souls game. I don't know, but it looks cool, is what I'll say. It looks cool. Um, and then the the one I liked the most that has like the nothingest tra- trailer is simply because it's coming from T Thai Games, T Games, however you say it. Um, and they're the people that did, uh, um, of course, Game of the Year should have been no- should have been Game of the Year nominated. Fist, Forge, and Shadowstorm. Uh, so their new game, The Wind Rising, is nothing like that game. It says The Wind Rising is a story driven action RPG. Developed by Thai Games, it follows the journey of a girl from a peaceful village who embarks on a grand adventure after she encounters a lost monster cub, which affects the rise and fall of the entire kingdom. Her fate is in the player's hands. Players can look forward to a refreshing and smooth combat experience, immersive and captivating story, and a world of ever-changing adventure. Um, yeah, so the trailer just shows like a green forest or whatever. It's not really a trailer, it's a teaser trailer, like whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, very different to their, 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 of course, Fist was like this fucking grayscale, mostly steampunk, 
city, yeah. you go into sewers, yeah. there's some trains or whatever, you know, like all that sort of stuff. Metroidvania, of course, I've talked about it a million times if you've been listening to the show. It's very good. You can play it, I think, nearly everywhere now. Um, and then this is uh, set in the forest, peaceful village, green. <laughs> so hmm. they've sort of gone the opposite direction. Um, it doesn't say, I mean, it says story driven action RPG. I don't know if that means it'll still be like a Metroidvania side scrolling. Maybe it isn't, maybe it is. I don't know. Either way, that's what I'm most keen out of these three to find out more about simply because of the developer. Anyway. Um, but yeah, good to see the China Hero Project still, still kicking strong. on. Still going strong. Still games coming out. So. Yeah. Um, and for people who forget, this is a PlayStation funded initiative to help, yeah, basically help get indie games from other parts of the world yeah. funding and uh get out to like an inter get an international release, you know, like a big, like wide release uh, yeah. and some pushing from PlayStation as well. So that's yeah. why they've got the China Hero Project and then the other one they, ne- they announced last year or started this year, whatever it was. What was that? The the India. Yeah, India um, Hero Project, which we talked about, whatever the Which makes sense. Were. Two of the biggest populations and potential markets in the world. You know? Yes. Yeah. So. So, cool. Uh, tell me what you think of this. I was a bit surprised by this, to be honest. So, uh, PlayStation Lifestyle, original The Last of Us actors returned for Halloween Horror Nights event. So, it says, if you happen to be going to The Last of Us Universal Halloween Horror Nights when it kicks off next month, you'll hear some familiar voices go along with the familiar location. Troy Baker and Ashley Johnson may not appear again and again in a sequel to The Last of Us Part 2, but have recorded new dialogue for the theme park attraction, which sees them reprising their roles as Joel and Ellie from PlayStation game series. VGC discovered this from an interview of Universal Orlando's Laura Souls in the latest edition of SFX magazine. Souls states that Baker and Johnson came in for a recording session for the event and re-recorded the dialogue for the Haunted House attraction, which will begin at September at Universal Studios on Orlando and Hollywood. It's based on the Pittsburgh section of the Fez game where Joel and Ellie are ambushed by savage hunters. Now, the only reason I say that this surprises me is I really did think that if they were doing anything like rides and stuff, and I knew nothing about this, I kind of presumed they would pivot to making it all about Pedro Pascal and Bella Ramsey. So because it's going to be like the most, they're going to be more known mm. by the, the wider public, I guess, in the uh, as the show's massive success and everything like that. So, I don't know. Do you think that's weird or? I mean, I'm happy uh, it's them, but... Yeah, maybe it's a, you know, it's a pricing thing or a strike thing. There's a number of reasons why it could be, you know, at the moment. Mm. So, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, maybe they're pushing the video game more, I guess. Yeah. yeah. You know, everybody's yeah, watched the show. Things. Let's get more people invested in video games, you know. Maybe. But I suspect it's, you know, how easy is it to get Ashley Johnson and Troy Baker? As opposed to voice, Pedro yeah. and Bella Ramsey. You know? Yeah, it's fair. All right, Red Dead Redemption. So this morning, as a recording, press start writes, well, there you have it. After weeks, maybe months of speculation fueled by recent ratings, board listings, and sneaky official website updates, those Red Dead Redemption remaster rumors have finally been put to bed because we now know that the game is getting a re-release on the Nintendo Switch and PlayStation 4. It's not far off either headed to both platforms next week on August 17th. The game on both Switch and PS4 will also ship with zombie theme Undead Nightmare expansion included. It also doesn't appear to have received a massive overhaul in any meaningful way from a visual standpoint, but presumably will offer a higher resolution slash performance on the PS4 than its PS3 counterpart. A physical retail release on both platforms is also due out later on October 13th. Um, yeah, I mean... What do you think? <laughs> I mean, surprised it hasn't come out sooner, I guess. <laughs> you know, um, a, a game trapped on the PS3 uh, on, you know, now available for you to play on PS4 and Nintendo Switch, weirdly. Yep. Yeah. When, yeah. Yeah. I saw a lot of disappointment on the, the, the X's when I woke up and checked that this morning. It was, it was <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A lot of people were really getting that uh, Red Dead Redemption like full remake thing t- uh, too uh, heavily in their hearts, I think. <laughs> Guys, this is a company that just put out like the mobile versions of uh, 
Gran Turismo Gran, of uh, no uh, GTA three and all you know all them. Like I don't think you should have got your hopes super high. Yeah, I think that's fair. Uh, do you have any care to play this? Have you? No, I'll just uh, happily remember have my fond memories. You know? Fair enough. Yeah, maybe if I if I got the itch, I would probably go back and finish two. <laughs> I'm not gonna play it because I tried to play it on stream once and I found it boring as all fuck. Yeah. So you hate cowboys. I do. I just apparently hate cowboys, you know. That's, yeah. It's a good thing. You can't get past them massacring the Indians. That's I mean it's, <laughs> if that's the reason I'm fine. I'm, I'm totally fine if that's the I'm fine if that's the, I'm fine to yeah, be on that part of history, I guess. Yeah. It's fine. Very anti John Wayne. Yeah, very anti John Wayne. Yeah. Well apparently he's a huge racist, so that's I feel like that's <laughs> yeah, a that's totally a fine problem. part of history again to, to decide on. All right, PlayStation Productions time. The movie, uh, well, it's actually not out yet, is it? But anyway, the movie we've both watched and is not yes. out yet. It's confusing. I think it's, I don't know. It's. You, I you, believe it is still <laughs> coming out here in Australia on Thursday. Okay, but I'm they just at my cinema. in America. Yeah. I'm looking at my cinema. You can buy tickets. There's yeah, a lot of screenings. I, I also looked at my cinema and... It is also apparently on Thursday, which leads me to believe that the delay must have just been in the States, which is hilarious because yeah. that means we're going to have watched it like a month before then. So, no, it's only like two weeks. Yeah, but I believe you it's know, pushed to the 28th. So, time, I don't know. Yeah. Two weeks, four weeks. What's the difference? You know, I mean, yeah. um, but, but, you know, at least still, it won't be spoiled for them. All right. <laughs> It can if you go listen to our spoiler cast, which will also be out for Grand Turismo oh, yeah. on the <laughs> PlayStation uh, uh, Platinum Explosion podcast feed here. This feed. Um, extra, yeah, this one you're listening to, so do that. Uh, but Grand Turismo, it's out. Film directed by Neil Blomkamp tells the true story of uh, a dude who won a competition, go from racing Grand Turismo cars, uh, sorry, the game, and then goes and races real cars. And it's not really based on Gran Turismo the video game. Instead, it's a true story of a thing that's based on Gran Turismo. So, a bit confusing. But, spoiler, spoiler free for Tash, on Gran it's Turismo. Good. It's good. It's an enjoyable sports film. Uh, fun, come underdog story. Uh, you know, fun races. Enjoyable characters. David Harbour's the highlights. Um... Yeah, it, it's formulaic in elements like this: the disapproving father and the 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 bad boy rival who gets he's got a temper and is entitled and shit, and uh, the random love interest thrown in. But um, you know, it hits the beats well. Uh, it looks very impressive. Um, it's very respectful to the video game, um, and like the little nods and that kind of stuff are really cool and that kind of thing. So, yeah, I thought it was. An enjoyable film. Yeah, I, I, I think it's a, a good sports movie. I agree it has its for, formulaic elements, but I, I do love a good uh, race car movie. I like, I like car movies when they're done well and shot well. And this has a lot of gritty, sort of well-done racing sequences, which I really quite enjoyed. Um, the characters or slash real people that are in it are totally fine. They don't spend too much on their personal lives, although I do think they spend a little bit too much, and I talked a little bit more about in the spoiler cast. Um, I reckon I could have got six or seven more minutes of car racing instead of a, a scene, which would have been my preference. But um, David Harbour is definitely the standout from the film. He's like committed, and he's really the the heart and makes the, the film well. Not to say that the 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 actor um, I keep forgetting his bloody fucking name, oh, Archie Medakui. Uh, who plays Jean Martin Borrow, the 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 race car driver? He like he's fine. It's just that like, and it, I don't say fine in a bad way. Like he is good because the emotional beats between him and David Harbour's character worked for me. But I wouldn't say he's like a super interesting person, which is just well, I don't really need him to be. Like I, he wants to race cars. I'm down for you racing cars, dude. I'll, I'll, I'll watch a movie about you wanting to race cars. So that's sort of, how, <laughs> you know, how that goes. So, um, but yeah, it's really weird to say that this is definitely the best PlayStation Productions movie by far. I think this is like way better than that charter film. Um, but it's not based on the game. It's based on a true story that's about the game. So, and then does that count? Yes, it does. Also, I just want to say it was very good to see the PlayStation Productions little, uh, 
logo thing play on the big screen again. And I completely forgot for a second it was a thing I didn't just make up for this podcast because I'm so used to hearing it when I put it at the start of this segment where I put that little do 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 like I put that in like between the, the segments and it's on the movie screen. I go, ha, that's what no never mind, I stole it's it right. from them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Second time. You know, because it didn't play in front of any of the TV shows. Yeah, yeah, I haven't seen it since Uncharted. And I don't know why they don't play in front of the TV shows. I feel like they should. It's fucking because they want to just get into the TV time, show. I guess. Yeah, good point. Yeah. yeah. The first episode, maybe? You know, you know just get know. it in the just first in one. There. Just get it in the first yeah. one. Oh, well, wow, there's a base of a new game. It's cool because I get to see Astro Bot on the big yeah. screen, you know, on part of it, which is cool. So, um, yeah, I would suggest checking out Grand Turismo. I definitely feel, yeah, it's, it's, it's a weird one. Like, it's, I feel like me and Ash, we're basically both saying, hey, this is a, this is a good sports movie, <laughs> you know, like yeah. not saying it as a, hey, go check this out if you're a fan of the video games or the, the video game uh, side of films and all that sort of stuff. It's like if you like decent or good sports films about dudes overcoming odds and, you know, racing and all that sort of stuff, this is a good film. That's, that's, mm. <laughs> that's what it is. I don't know if it's a good video game movie because it's not really much to do with the video game. It starts out with a lot of video game for the first like half hour or whatever. And then... After that, it's a car movie. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't know what, which is fine. So, can't uh, complain. I can't complain. I got nothing to complain. Well, I, I do. I had a little bit of complaint about but uh, it's good. Uh, to tie into this, so Press Start writes Grand Turismo 7's latest update adds content from the film. So if you want to, if you go watch the movie, you're like, fuck, I feel like racing some Grand Turismo myself now. And maybe I can be the next. Uh, actually, they, they don't do GT Academy anymore. So maybe you can't. Maybe they'll bring it back. I don't know. Uh, but Gran Turismo 7 update patch 1.36 has added some stuff uh, so you can to celebrate the release of Gran Turismo movie this month uh, PlayStation is running a gift campaign from for the Nissan or Nissan Nissan how the fuck you want to say GTR Nismo GT3 18 from August 7th until September 28th during the campaign period just click the special panel on the upper right of the world map screen to redeem the vehicle do not list, miss this limited time opportunity additionally a new livery has been added recreating the GTR as seen within the movie this livery can be selected when purchasing the Nissan GTR Nismo GT3 18 from Brand Central and then there's a few other things that have been added what are you laughing about? the third one <laughs> the third one? Oh yeah in this list yep <laughs> <laughs> why all right so introduction of four new cars you can now get these cars chevrolet corvette c1 58 maserati mc20 20 toyota ambulance simdic 21 purchasable at brand C- central from late september why is that funny ash yeah plays a big role in the film <laughs> <laughs> Toyota GR Corolla Marizo Edition 2022 is also purchasable. Uh, the following extra menus have been added. Extra menu 26, Maserati, collector, collector's level 40 and above. Extra menu 27, Aston Marty, collector level 44 and above. Extra menu number 28, key cars, collector level 27 and above. By the way, for people who haven't played the game, extra menus are basically track level things, like, because the game, it's a really weird game in which you race cars, but all the levels and stuff happen out of a cafe. <laughs> Fucking, oh yeah, f- fucking Japan. Um, <laughs> scapes. <laughs> scapes. Um, so these are the these are areas where you can place cars and you can like use them for taking f- uh, photo mode stuff. Uh, they've added the fire station. I don't know how that fits in the movie. <laughs> I'm also not too sure. It is in Japan. The fire station. <laughs> <laughs> Did they walk past it like in one scene? <laughs> it was like on the other side of the street when he was buying that Walkman. <laughs> yeah, well, it could be. I don't know. They, they're like, ah, uh, well, they've probably got all the other areas from the the bloody movie in the in the game as areas already. They're like, oh yeah, we've already got Tokyo, we've already got this racetrack, we've already got this fuck. What could we add? Ah, uh, the fire station <laughs> from the back of that one scene. <laughs> Let's add that. That will make up for everything. Let's do that. All right, that's it for this week's episode of Platinum Explosion. Of course, zeet us, tweet us, do all the things. Come join post. our Discord. Post at us. Post, post, post your things. Uh, explosionnetwork.com slash Twitter. Explosionnetwork.com slash Discord. Let us know what you think about the Gran Turismo movie. Uh, you can support us by heading on over to explosionnetwork.com slash support, which takes you to our Kofi page. As little as a dollar helps keep this show 
the other shows and the website alive. And until next week, remember that every trophy counts. <laughs>